What's going on, James here? And it's been about a week since I did a video, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't doing a lot of content. I was invited to do a three-day workshop with me and my business partner directly with Go High Level and their entire audience. And so if you missed that or you wanted a replay of day one, I'm going to be doing that in this video. Understand a few things. This is about foundations. This is about you never having to worry about picking a niche, what service to provide, what do I say, what scripts do I use, who do I talk to, where do I find these clients, I cover everything. We're going to cover everything in detail as well. This is going to be about two hours long. So if you've ever wanted to crack the code to your own agency, your SMA business, your LGA business, everything is revealed in this video. Day two, day three, I'll be posting over the next couple of days. This is day one, but at the end of this day, you'll be able to take action find some clients possibly, go through that process, build your business the right way, and I'll be giving away some stuff. So if you have a goal high-level account, this is going to be easily worth it for you. If you're thinking about getting goal high-level, there's a special offer that they allowed me to extend. I don't know how long I can extend it for. And so tons and tons of resources, scripts, what to say, who to say it to, what niche to pick, what's the process look like. I have a screenshot here. That's the process that we're going to be going through. It might not mean a lot to you, but at the end of these two hours, if you just dedicate two hours, heck, put it on 1.25 speed, in less than two hours, you will fully understand how to operate this business with no questions at all. And if you do have questions, you simply just go to my school community, Future Agencies. The link is down in the description. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video to anybody else who would be interested in it, as well as comment down below. And put the notifications on so you know when day two comes out, day three comes out, and any future videos that I do. So enjoy day one. I'm sure. I know for a fact because we had thousands and thousands of people on these calls uh, on this workshop. And so I got a ton of feedback. So I know I wanted you, my YouTube family, to also have access to it in case you didn't realize that that's what I was doing last week. So let's get at it and let's start day one. <laughs> All right, sweet. So this is going to be about, over the next three days, it's going to be about utilizing an, a very simple service um, and then taking that simple service, making it the mechanism to creating a high ticket agency. And I believe that some of you are going to be within three days by the, by the, uh, by the end of day three, like you'll be rocking and rolling with this. You may even roll it out to current clients that you have, or you may be able to land clients because of this. All right. So that's what I'm hoping happens. A lot of people who want to start this business, they, they either have a lack of knowledge, they have too much knowledge, meaning they're overwhelmed and they're learning from all these different people. And so they get overwhelmed. They hear too many voices, too much advice, because now like, you know, starting an agency is the new, it's the new thing. Although that was probably about a couple of years ago, it became the new thing. Now everybody's trying to do it. Um, and then what ends up happening is you kind of don't have that self-confidence in fulfillment. And this is why I love what we're going to be going through because the service that we're going to be going through, it's so easy to fulfill on that it ends up basically giving you the confidence to go deeper into more services. And then a lot of people have problems with getting over what we call the stitch, going from zero to one client and then one to many clients. So I need you guys to basically promise me the following. You will give in to the process that I'm going to go through, especially if you're going to stay these all, all three days. You got to give into this process and kind of remove all prior notions of what others have told you, what you've heard, maybe what you've learned. It's not because we're going to be teaching you anything like groundbreaking or brand new. It's more about the process and how everything falls into place. Um, so I, I'm just asking that you guys allow me day one uh, for the magic to happen on day two and three. All right. And you'll see what I mean as I go through this and really quickly, I'm going to run through this because especially if you're kind of new to this, you're probably still wondering like eh, the agency thing, it sounds like a good opportunity, but I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sold on it. And so why start an agency? And this is what Jason and I talk about all the time in our coaching program every single week, multiple times a week is the blueprint, the process never changes. You never have to always learn something new like you do with other businesses. And as I go through the process today, you're going to kind of say like, wow, so this is the same process you've been using since 2014. Myself, Jason, since 2012. 
it's going to be the exact same process. And when you can repeat something over and over and over again and never have to change, that is going to make you better than everybody else who's jumping from one process to another process, adding things here, adding things there. And all you're really doing is chasing the shine and not getting great at what you can get great at if you just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So the agency is beautiful because it crosses the globe. Uh, it is impossible for it to ever get saturated. It doesn't take many clients to change your life. And I'm going to show you mathematically what we mean. Uh, it is a respectable business. So, you know, one of the things I dabbled in in the past was multi-level market, multi-level marketing. And when you get into the multi-level marketing business, you're afraid to tell anybody that you're doing that because, you know, it's not the most, uh, it's not the best business to start. People are like, oh God, is this guy coming down the streets and try to recruit me. So an agency is respectable. Okay. It could be leveraged, sold, bought, or passed down. It's a low barrier to entry. It is actually the simplest business to start, get results. Yes, I understand that that is my opinion, but I think it's an opinion that has been built over the last 10 years since doing this. All right. Um, I'm going to go through this. Listen, I, this slide is just about obviously everybody understands that the digital age is here growing exponentially. I'm not going to even bother going into this. Search advertising is increasing. Businesses, especially since, you know, obviously COVID, even though four years ago, COVID was the wake up call to businesses that said, oh my God, I better get online. Whatever I got to do, if this something ever happens again, I need to get my customers to find me online. All right. So I'm not going to go through the stats. Everybody should know that it's all about being online. So here's what I want you to, uh, or what you should expect over these three days. All right. You're never going to be stuck on your niche again. After I go through this, you're never going to be stuck on your service. You won't ever be stuck on where your next client is going to come from. You won't ever be stuck on how to fulfill on these services. And you will know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. You will know how to leverage Go High Level properly. You will be able to implement AI as a service as well, and not just hear it as this buzzword. And you're going to finally have a roadmap, like a roadmap that you can follow, and you're not going to be wondering what to do next. Okay, so that's why that's my expectations. All right, so you know we talked about the giveaways. So if you stay for all three days, here is the the structure of giveaways. Now, the snapshot uh, at the end of this day, at the end of the training today, you'll understand what you're going to get directly after day one. But the overarching giveaway is going to look like this. And we're going to, there'll be some rules to this, right? We'll go through it over the next couple of days. But uh, go high level training, Facebook ads training, pay per click training. Today, I'm going to give you an agency site. At the end of day three, you're going to have the ability uh, to get 13 done for you funnels a rep management snapshot, referral automation snapshot, scripts, sheets, and all the above. Now, this is not going to make any sense to you guys now because you don't understand how this is all going to fall into place. But I just kind of want to give you, um, I guess, uh, excitement for what is to come. So if you're excited, again, throw something in the chat because I know it's important to, uh, you know, to push this out to other people. All right. All right. So, um, Seven years of coaching this exact model. And like I said, you know, believe it or not, even though the world changes so much, our process has not changed. And uh, there has been documented screenshots because we run contests in our coach program, $2,215,081 per month in verified student retainers for four years of from 2018 to 2022. It's a simple process. You guys are going to see that. It's simple. And a lot of people... Make this business hard, not on purpose, but it's hard when you're listening to a lot of different people trying to do different things. So hopefully over the next three days, we're going to fix that. And a very simple success form formula. You always got to take action. You got to be consistent and persistent in your action. And you got to be a little patient, you know, and when I say patience, you know, I find it funny, like a lot of people, they'll try this business for two weeks. They'll be like, oh, you know, I haven't landed a client yet. What is wrong with me? But they're going to go to school for four years and not make a dollar until, you know, until they graduate and spend $250,000 on education to earn a $50,000 a year paying job. So it's all about perspective. So I want everybody to have that perspective while going through the these next few weeks.
a uh, few days. So wh who is this for? It's for a no size agency, which would be beginners, a small size agency, a medium size agency, and even a large agency. You're going to get golden nuggets no matter where you are in your journey. Um, and so that's, I think it's for anybody in the agency world. This is this uh, three days is going to be for. And anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur, maybe there are people out there that are just kind of weighing the, this business opportunity of building your marketing agency. Uh, and this could be for you. Maybe this is what you need to hear. And maybe you'll take the leap, the leap of faith and understand like, you know what, once you see this, I can do this. And that's what I hope to do too. So if you're on the, on the fence of that, maybe we could push you over. Yeah. And also, also James, there's a decent amount of small business owners that are experts in their fields. And they're like, you know what, I would love to do a marketing service in my franchise or my lane. And then we also see uh, other digital citizens that are not agency owners, like influencers, course creators, coaches, consultants that mm -hmm. are interested in a marketing agency type of a service line as well. So I'm, I'm love to kind of see their curiosity as well on this. Yeah. And that's perfect. So like for businesses, then this is even better for you because, uh, you know, I've owned businesses before outside of a marketing agency. And let me tell you, I understand how difficult it is, you know, because you're good at running your business and then, you know, having the time and the energy to be able to also market your business. Well, you know, this service that we're going to be talking about specifically today is so easy that even a business owner who has no time, set it up and let it run in the background. And that's all you need to do. And that could be a service that you can run for yourself. All right. So day three, uh, these three days, basically we're just going to break them down and we may go off a little bit and, you know, maybe go a little deeper depending on questions and stuff, but day one, finding the niche, building your offer and find paying clients. Day two, leveraging a very simple service with go high level for speed and results, and then adding AI to it. And then day three, how to turn all the above into a high ticket SaaS offer. All right. And you don't have to, right? But day three, we'll be talking about how to how to do all that. All right, cool. And our big promise in three days, you're going to have an epiphany for some of you as you start to realize that each part of the process builds upon each other. All right. Meaning you're going to have full clarity in this business. You're going to have a complete clarity roadmap on what to do, when to do it, what to say, who to say it to how to say it, what to charge, what to service, and how to repeat it, all right? And we know that this works because we have thousands of screenshots that it works. People landing $1,550 client. Frank built a uh, did a million dollars in eight months of his business and in 2022 did 5 million. And by the way, Paulson, don't worry, I have a disclaimer, <laughs> okay? It's coming. I do have a disclaimer. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of okay. us. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to go through all these. You guys can screenshot or whatever, but just we just know that this process, it works and it works and it works. Okay. And so on and so on. Okay. So in order to understand kind of the process, I like to always start with the end in mind. So you kind of know where we're going to be going with this. And the end looks like this. The entire business is built with this Roadmap. This is the prospect. You have a niche and you start prospecting, right? When you find a prospect, you do so. And by the way, I'm going to go through each part of this. This is the end. Client qualification interview, we call it a trial close to a trial onboard, to a retainer close, retainer onboard, upselling. And then we're going to go into a referral automation. And then the process repeats itself. That is it. That is the entire agency roadmap, okay? And when you see it kind of laid out as a roadmap, it starts to make sense. And as I go through, again, more of this, uh, it'll start to even make more and more sense, okay? So this is the end, and we're going to now work toward it. A lot of people talk about, you know, selling SaaS and stuff like that. Great business model, uh, you know, and I agree, okay? But what if you can now take the same business model, but instead of collecting the 197s and the 97s, we learn a way to collect bigger ticket items like $6,994 a month, okay? Instead of basically having to deal with 30 people, 40 people, 50 people with a SaaS offer, we're, we only really need to deal with a handful. Okay. And that is something that we did. We had our 197s, the 97s, and then we started to say, 
all right, you know what? I'd rather have less clients that are paying me more so I could spend more time with them, make a bigger impact with them, and believe me, make a lot more money, okay? So that's what we're, gonna, we're building up to. So here's our gigantic disclaimer. The numbers we show our, are our numbers, and we don't guarantee you will have the same results. We have been doing this for 10 years, in some cases over 10 years, 10 to 12 years, okay? Because everybody knows that, all right? However, <clears throat> the numbers can be adjusted based on your comfortability, your niche, and your experience. Maybe you would never sell 7,000 a month uh, retainers. So, so you could sell 1,000 a month, 500 a month, whatever you feel comfortable with, wherever you are in your journey, this is just about the process. And you can attach the, the costs based on your comfortability, okay? In simpler terms, this is about getting good enough to build up to these kind of offers. Okay, so we're gonna start getting into the niche. So I'm gonna handle the niche and I'll probably let Jason jump into the service because my throat is gonna start drying up and I have to get some water, okay? <clears throat> so they always say that riches are in the niches. And obviously I think a lot of people have heard, you know, the whole specialist versus general generalist. When you're a generalist, you typically can't charge as much as a specialist. Drilling down into finding only one niche will make you the specialist, okay? And yes, it makes it easier to close business and it creates a rinse and repeat scalable, scalable business. So if I'm working with dentists and I offer them two services and I'm only doing it for dentists, well, now I'm, I'm the dentist specialist for running, let's say, reputation management. We'll get into the service in just a little bit. And then when when you could you're you're more valuable when you can hone in on that niche, and the best part about when you start to hone in on niches is that you have the ability to literally copy everything that has worked for dentist one over to dentist two, and now you're just rinse and repeating. Okay, and so niching down is completely fine, but most people, you know, right away they they really can't, and I want to talk about why. The only way, time you should start to niche down is if you can get great results for that niche and only if you enjoy working with clients in that niche. And the easiest way to niche down is to, is to tackle existing opportunities, experience, service-based or results-based. So really quick, I'm going to dive into this just a little bit. We, I don't have an a image of it. I forgot to put it. We call it like the pyramid of choosing your niche. In the beginning, and a lot of people I feel are, you know, in the beginning of their agencies, it is okay and should be expected that you can work in multiple niches. And, and so many people get stuck with this. They get stuck with literally not starting their business because they're still trying to pick their niches. Does anybody, let, let's uh, ask the chat, put a... Uh, a one in the chat if you are stuck with the niche, picking the niche, because it's very, very common. We see it in our coaching. We see it in you know all over the place is that yeah. you guys get stuck on it and then they can't move forward. I'm seeing a ton of ones, actually. Yeah. What if you don't have to pick your niche? What if there was a way that you don't have to? And I think it's on my next slide. And you go with the niches that you already have opportunities around you in. And I can't tell you how many results we, that we get when we tell people, you know, when they ask, well, well, you know, James, what niche? Jason, what niche? Well, what business have you worked in in the past? Where do you work? Do any of your friends or family own businesses? Do they have friends and family that have businesses? And people start to thinking like, oh, you know, you know what? My brother-in-law owns, you know, a tow a towing company or my sister-in-law's mother or father is a dentist. And when you start to kind of, instead of thinking of what's the best niche to start, you start to think of where are the niches in my warm market that I could tackle right away. And so it's, this is the, the right way to do it because otherwise you'll be sitting there for months and months and months researching on what's the best best niche to start. And this is not about getting everything right in the beginning. This is about making money as fast as you possibly can and getting the at-bats and talking to people and letting people know exactly what you do. So James, and, so, uh, yeah. James and Jason, let me ask a quick question. And myself and Chase Buckner, we teach a lot of this in um, 
a lot of our masterminds and conferences and events and you know we we agency owners ourselves of the past we always say your launch strategy is a little different than your scale strategy right so yep. the scale is not really identified till you get your feet wet and you have some experience you feel confidence about your fulfillment and then at that point you're trying to figure out your brand positioning who you want to be how to attack and create partnerships is that how y'all feel as well or is there any sy synergies there yeah. yeah, Jason could um, jump in on this. Yeah, you know, what James was alluding to, we like to look at it as almost like a pyramid. Like when you're just getting started, that's way different than you five years down the road. That's way different than you 10 years down the road. So as James was alluding to, it's it's more about, we look at it as a pyramid. Your foundation, when you're just getting started, you're you're building a portfolio is essentially what we like to say, is you're taking opportunities as they present themselves. Right, right away for me to just get started, I don't just say, you know what, I'm going to work with dentists. Oh, okay, great. You can do that. But how do you know dentists are who you, how do you know? Like, why dentists? Like, did you just randomly, well, I heard they pay a lot of money. Okay, cool. Well, while you're focused, laser focused on dentists who you don't even know if that's going to be your permanent niche because you've never worked with them before, you're, you're passing out, you're passing on opportunities that potentially are presenting themselves that you could have just gotten that quick money with. And so what I like to say is get started quick, start making money because money gives you options, but it also is going to give you diversity. It's going to give you that experience. So maybe I work with a chiropractor because it presented itself. It was in my network. And then, then I, I crossed paths with the dentist at Starbucks and we got to talk and so I take on this dentist. Before I know it, I may be working with a chiropractor, a plumber, a dentist, a realtor, right? You can't, you can't open up your door and throw a stone without hitting at least five realtors. We all know them, right? And so in the end, you eventually get to the point where you're ready to go to that next level where you say, you know what? I was working on this chiropractor and I just could not get any results. No matter what we did, no results with them. I don't think I'm going to work with chiropractors anymore. Worked with this realtor. Holy cow. We blew it out, out the water for them. It was a great experience. I may consider looking at more realtors. The dentist, you know, didn't do too bad with them. So going to look at dentists, the plumber, and they're all a-holes. Everyone I talk to, I don't want to work with them. So now I'm maybe focused on realtors and dentists. And then eventually I'll get to that point where I'm like, you know what? I'm successful in these niches, but here's the ones that I always get great results for consistently. They treat me well. I enjoy working with them and they pay me my value. And then that's the top of the pyramid when I say I'm going all in on that. That's the way we look at building ages, which sounds like it's aligned with the way that you guys talk about it as well. Yeah. Love it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that, and the best part about that is it remove it like takes like the burden off your shoulders of like trying to get everything right on every step of the way. It's not about that. It's just about at bats talking to people and, you know, just, just taking action. <clears throat> Um, and so, yeah, as I go through this, do you already have experience in, in, in a niche, previous employment? You know, all of a sudden when people start to think, they're like, oh, my God, I even think about that. Yeah, I should probably, you know, I used to work at a dentist's office or, you know, things like that. Right. And then we have a prospecting strategy, which we'll go through called Arms Reach. It can help you highlight these opportunities, people you already know, people you don't, you don't even, people you don't know that you already know. All right. Um Again, and then there's other things that go into it, right? Choosing a niche based on the services that you want to provide. There are some people that just, they don't want, let's say, provide Facebook ads at all. And there's going to be some niches that do extremely well on Facebook. So maybe you shouldn't be going into any of the niches that, uh, that would require results from Facebook ads, let's say. And this allows you to control the consistency of results, filters of prospects, makes scaling easy, like we just talked about. And... It, Specifically in these three days, we're going to be talking about reputation management. And so the trial service decides your niche. So for example, well, I'll get to it on the next slot, slide, but you could also d dive into uh, re research sources like Groupon, uh, LSA ads, Google ads, like what is out there already in these niches? What are people, uh, what are the offers that are out there that you could utilize in any existing fulfillment? And uh, so then choosing a niche based on existing results, there's people here now that already have existing results in certain niches. So maybe like Jason said, you double down on that. If you've gotten great results, it just makes it so much easier to start selling. And so that's why in the beginning, and for those of you who are just starting, like your only job is to get results. It's not even about 
landing $2,000 a month clients. It's about getting the results so you can say something like, you know, hey, we just helped Mary, uh, Mary Realty get 100 referrals and close three deals last month. And we're looking to expand and work with another realtor. Would you like us to do the same thing for, for what we did, Mary? Right. That conversation is so much easier to close than, you know, just a straight up like, hey, give us $2,000 a month and we're going to run Facebook ads. Don't know if I'm going to fulfill on it. Don't know what's going to happen, but I want you to pay me because I want to make money. Right. There, there's a rhyme and reason for all this. And again, research, source, research sources would be results you've got and results someone else has gotten. And so if there was any action items on the niche portion, right, you would choose which niche, niche you will prospect to consider the opportunities within your network. You can, uh, you can still take opportunities that appear outside your niche based on who you know. We call that the arms reach method, which is your inner circle, who you know on Facebook, who you know on Instagram, people in your sphere. And then remember, this is just to get started. You're never stuck in a niche and you will, uh, you're will you going to be able to adjust as you start working with people. Okay. Does this make sense to a lot of people when it comes to the niche portion? It, give us a, give us the one in the chat. If you're um, resonating with uh, kind of the foundation and the stage that we're setting here. Okay. I'm seeing a ton of ones here. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. <clears throat> And and so we I did have the pyramid by the way Jason just a little a little bit different than the niche one Jason jump in and explain this one because I grabbed this from uh one of, you always talk about this so you can go through this yeah this is the uh, the pros this is actually our prospecting pyramid um so a little bit different than the niche one but essentially it falls along the same thing is is we're going to start in our network that's where we're going to find again existing niche opportunities that are already nearby right um once we once we then start working with these niches we start to realize it kind of was i was alluding to a little earlier like hey i enjoy working with these guys these guys and these guys so now i want to expand beyond my network now it's time to start the scale of my business so I need to know who I'm going to reach out to at this point, right? I need to, I, at this point, I'm narrowing it down and say, all right, you know, I, I'm getting great results with realtors and getting great results with dentists. So I'm going to pursue them. And that's where we'll go to the layer, what we call layer two prospecting, where we're, it's usually a cold type of prospecting where we are going direct to these people. That's where I say, all right, I know I want to go after dentists. So let me get a list of dentists. I'm going to call them. I'm going to email them, whatever the cold outreach is. Whereas our arms reach, or we like to call it the double tap, we're going to go over those methods and prospecting. Um, that's where we're able to, to kind of attract people to us um, initially, but that scale just isn't there. So once we know who, we're, who, we, who we want to work with, then we can pursue them with the other essentially prospecting methods in layer two. Um, and then layer three is where we say, all right, we're at a good point where cash flow is really good. And I'm really now laser focused on either this one niche or maybe two niches that I'm getting killer results for, they pay me my value, and I enjoy working with them. That's where I may inject more capital into the process and do stuff like run appointment booking ads or whatnot um, at that level there. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to actually, Jason, I'm going to take service. I don't know why I said you would. So I'll, I'll, you'll jump in maybe in the offer. Yeah. Um, so we're going to specifically talk about reputation management. Does everybody know what reputation management is? I guess put a one in the chat. If you know what it is, yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, let let's assume they don't from the context of how reputation management is delivered, because a lot of them okay. use reputation management and get reviews for their businesses or whatnot. But there's a good amount of small business owners that don't think of it in the sense of delivering it as a service. All right, so it's a brand service, okay? And we use email and text campaigns to generate more online reviews for businesses. We send a review request to existing and new customers. And again, this is, it will all tie in when we use the word trial, existing customers. So review requests and existing and new customers typically start with existing customers, okay? In our trial, which will be in our offer when we'll get to that. Then you're gonna set up a process to get consistent ongoing reviews from new customers. It could be manual, it could be automated. And it has an extremely high perceived value to generate new positive online reviews, reduces negative online reviews. And the best part about this service, it's always active. 
and it works very quickly. Now, a lot of people, this is what a lot of people think when they are like, oh, you know, I don't know if businesses would be up for it. Well, most people don't leave reviews voluntarily. They don't like walk out of a, you know, a dentist's office and say, I can't wait to show, you know, to tell everybody how great this dentist was. It has, they're not going to just voluntarily be done. It need, they need to ask for it. And the dentist is busy, busy, you know, running from patient to patient. 99% of them are not asking. And the worst part about this is that people who do run and leave reviews are the ones that aren't happy. They are the loudest ones. When somebody has a bad experience, they're the first one that will go and leave a bad review. And so reputation management as a service has a huge benefit for clients because it gives businesses a simple, fast solution to manage and monitor their reviews. It increases positive customer reviews with little effort, and it helps clients filter and address negative customer experiences prior to them actually going to Google and damaging their brand. It also naturally will increase their online exposure, gives more opportunity for potential uh, customers to find that business and more opportunity for potential customers to see something positive about that business. That is the value in this service. And it looks something like this, okay? So a customer walks out of the dentist's office, okay? Within a few days, they get an email and a te text asking about their experience in that dentist's office. This is an example, okay? Then if they have a good experience, we ask them to leave a review on Google. And then Google or that dentist gets a new positive review. If they leave a bad experience, we're gonna ask them to leave an internal, uh, internal response form to say why, you know, what happened, you know, how can we fix it? And they can still go and leave a review, a bad review, but it's just like an extra step for them to do it. And a lot of times internally, when we ask them for an internal review, all they want to do is get out how mad they are, right? So all we do, uh, let me just click this again so I can see. So it, up here, if they leave four or five stars, we ask them to leave a review on Google and it looks like this. This is the next step, okay? I think people can see this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, you can see. It's on the bad experience side. If they leave anything less than a three star or a three star, two star, one star, we have this internal form that will ask them to, to tell us why did you have a bad experience? And then our client who is paying us to run this reputation management service will then be notified to say, hey, so-and-so just left a bad internal review. You better reach out to them and fix it before they go to Google and leave a bad review. And this is what stops them from doing it. Now, I'm just going to kind of tackle the elephant in the room. People say, well, Google, it's against Google's policy to uh, review gate. Here's what we're doing, though. We're not asking them to leave a review on Google and then review gating. We're asking them to leave an internal review for, uh, for ourselves. And when they do that, we're collecting internally. You're allowed to do that. When they leave a good review, we say, oh, by the way, here's our link to go to Google. Does this process make sense to everybody? They are, le they are first leaving an internal review for us, okay? When they leave a good review, we're simply on the next page asking them to say, hey, why don't you go and review us on Google? That's it. When they leave a bad internal review, we're simply asking them, well, what did we do wrong? How can we fix it? Yeah, I like to 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 just say in here, like when when people voice, you know, it doesn't stop them from going out and leaving a bad review. They may still say, you know what, I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to like, I want to put it out there. But but what we find, and I say we, not, not not James and I sat around and researched this, just just in general in life, right? When people get a chance to vent, it, it, they usually that's all they want. They want to hear their have their side of the story told. And so for most people, it's a majority of the people, whenever, if they've had a bad experience, they're they're and then they're asked, hey, we're sorry about that. You know, customer service is what we strive for. It's our, you know, what we want. Tell us about your experience. We'd love to hear more about it so we can, you know, whatever, make it right, whatever the verbiage is, right? We already actually have some pre-canned verbiage. 
But in the end, it is them being able to say, yeah, I had this experience, blah, 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 blah. right? And not, you know how it goes. Not every experience is something that was the business's fault, um, but some business, sometimes it is the business's fault. It doesn't even matter. In this case, they're getting a chance to vent. And for most people, that's enough. All right, got my, I got it out of me. All right, I feel much better now. And then they go on about their day, right? And in a lot of cases, what can happen is the business owner who receives that feedback, well, for one, they get a, they get a, a nice audit of, of how their services are going. Like, how is their business operating? Maybe, they, maybe there's a problem with employee that they, that they find out about through this process. But in any scenario, it does give the business owner a chance to reach back out and make things right, regardless of whose fault it was, to make things right, do right by that customer. And what can happen is people who left a negative internal response will get taken care of by the business owner and that satisfies them. They're like, yeah, that's all I want. I want someone to hear me and then just make it right. And then that turns them into now a positive experience that they will go out and share that, hey, I had a bad experience initially, but the business owner talked to me and it was a great, I can't recommend this business enough. And so you will find that a lot of these negative reviews or sorry, negative feedbacks actually turn into positive reviews. That's the, that's the power of this process here. Yeah. And the pro and, and it's very simple. And I'm as I'm reading <clears throat> all this, I'll I'll go. I'm not going to go through each question because we'll do that at the end. But um, we have people because there are some people who are like, oh, but what if they still want to leave a review on? So if you take a look here, right, we're saying, hey, thanks for the good the the four stars. Review us on Google, <clears throat> and then down here, it says if you're not satisfied. Some people feel comfortable and they'll put like a Google uh, link underneath this form just if they're like, oh, it's, you know, review gating and all that stuff. So it's not even about the, the, this service is not about how you run it. Let's just because uh, you'll understand this in just a second. This is about getting your foot in the door with clients and offering an amazing service for them that they get a, a lot of value and then building from that. Okay. And real quick, just to understand the pricing of this, right? This is our, our foot in the door offer. This is our foot in the door service. It's hard to say no to. And we just, we kind of, if you're charging $2.97 a month, we recommend $3.97. But if you're charging $2.97 a month and you're and you're utilizing Go High Level's 97 per, mo per month plan, you could have three clients, right? So if you have three clients at $2.97, with one client, you're at 67% margin, 83% margin. If you have two clients under that plan, if you have three clients at 297, you're at 90% margin, right? So this is in why utilizing- of, You mean in the context of paying for high level yourself? Correct, for free. correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the context yeah. of hard yeah. costs, if you're paying for go yeah. high level at the 97 level and you have three clients utilizing rep management services, that's the profit margins, okay? I just, we like to give that. So, because people always say, oh, you know, people say a thousand a month, but how much is really the hard cost? Well, we just want to kind of tackle that before, before we get that question. Okay. And obviously at 297 with the unlimited clients, you know, you could see that profit margin go up the more clients you get. All right, Jason, I'm going to release you onto the baby Yoda strategy. This is Jason's baby from inception. Uh, this is how he likes to explain about building your offer. So you are good to go, my friend. Yeah. So are, are you going to run slides for me, James? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll click. Fine. Oh, I didn't okay. even think about that. That'll just save me from going in there and messing everything up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the baby Yoda strategy. So what is this? This is essentially our way of communicating how to structure offers. And it really all originates and starts with <laughs> with cable TV, right? There's a lot of a lot of people that remember the good old days when people just only had cable. And, you know, what is that? Right. It's you being able to watch movies, documentaries, shows, music channels. Right. But the thing with cable is and, and everyone really started hating cable. It was like this one big bill, you know, anywhere up to 200 plus a month. Um, no flexibility, right? Hey, I only watch this channel on this channel. Can I get rid of it? No, nope. you got to get these other 200 channels that you'll never watch again and pay up, you know, for our ultimate package, you know, for that one channel that you really want. And it was limited choices, right? And long-term contracts, right? So in the end, it was not very flexible. People didn't really like it. But then what happened, right? We started seeing the streamers. We started seeing the streamers and what did they offer, right? Movies, 
documentary shows, music channels, you know, again, Netflix kind of kicked off this whole process and it was like this awesome thing where it's like, hey, hey, I'm just only X number, you know, X, I can't even remember how much it is now. But let's just say 10 bucks it was, 10 bucks a month. And you can watch all these movies, right? You get all these movies, uh, no commercials, all this stuff. And like, hey, I love that. And then, you know, Netflix came out. And then, then shortly after, we've seen stuff like Hulu, right? Hulu's like, hey, if you like Netflix, I'm a cheap thing, but I, I can offer you all these TV channels, right? All these TV channels that you're used to watching. And, uh, but no, no commercials, no big contracts. Um, and so in the end, wait, go back. Yeah, yeah, oh. go back one more. So- so what was that, right? It was all these streamers started to come out, but it gave us flexibility. We can pick and choose what we wanted. We weren't stuck with this giant contract. Choices were limited. Uh, we had some trial periods and whatnot. And then enters, yeah, the next slide, then enters my old friend, the baby Yoda here that I like to call this whole strategy, right? We started seeing on social media, like we started seeing this guy all over the place. Like, what was this? What is this thing? Like all over the place. And it was like, hey, this new show, it's coming on this new channel called Disney Plus. There was just one more of those streamers that was like, man, all right, I have this, but I got to have this so I can watch the adventures of this little guy. That looks like it's going to be a great show. And so in the end, what happened was we have all these channels, right? We have all the cable. Go ahead, next slide. Yeah. We have all these channels, right, that are happening both on cable and all these streamers, but they're, they're giving you the same thing, right? Cable is 200 bucks a month, but because of the accumulation of all these streamers, we still end up paying around 200 bucks a month. But the difference is, I'm not sure if you have it on the next slide. Well, okay, go back. So go back to, so the big, but the big lesson here is, is that, People are happy paying for the streamers because they did it their way, right? Hey, I got to build this thing. I wanted this. I wanted this. It's everything I wanted. And I didn't have this one massive bill. They don't see it as one massive bill because they've been paying for it in individual little pieces, right? And so that's where this strategy kind of comes from. Go ahead and do the next. Is that we can essentially build a strategy like the streamers do versus cable. We wanna be like the streamers versus cable. We wanna start them with like a Netflix. Say, hey, tired of all that stuff that you're used to? Why don't you just give us a little try? We're Netflix, you have some flexibility and whatnot. And say, yeah, I love it. And then the next product comes in, right? Disney Plus comes in and says, hey, you wanna watch me? The Adventures of uh, uh, Baby Yoda, right? You're gonna enjoy, go ahead and get Disney Plus. And then Hulu comes along and sling an Apple TV, except for, the difference is we're replacing it with streamers or sorry, we're replacing the streamers with our services. You can go to the next slide. So in this case, we're going to give them a nice little foot in the door. We're going to give them the Netflix. And in that instance, it is our free trial of reputation management. Hey, instead of these big giant packages that you're probably being approached, approached by every, every other day, why don't you just give us a little try with this one service? It's amazing. It works quick. And we're just going to give you a trial, right? And if you like it, then we can talk about the long-term results, which is the next step, right? Where we then lock them in, right? So the Netflix seven-day, 14-day trial is over. Now it's like, hey, you like the service? Here's the monthly investment, right? And so we lock them in on the reputation management. And then we start approaching them with the other streamers, right? In our case, we like to use a service called message marketing. We say, hey, if you love this, the next thing to build on is this right here. And then so on and so forth at the lead generation and SEO, where we say, hey, the next opportunity we see, as you can see, you're already enjoying these things. The next opportunity to put fuel on the fire is service three, service four. And frankly, you can sell unlimited services using this model, but it's just taking the streamer approach versus the cable, one big bill, one big package. There's nothing wrong with that solution, just that this is way easier we found when you're just getting started to start building your business, right? Get your foot in the door with one service and with a trial, and then you can go from there. After you do this, heck, even once, you can really change up your model at that point. What your The goal of this is to get to results as fast as possible. Because with results, you can then leverage to sell anything ever. If you remember a couple slides back, James was talking about what that conversation might look like. It was about that realtor. Hey, 
we're already working with Mary Realtor. Got her 100 buyer and seller leads, buyer leads last month. She closed three deals. We're now looking to work with a realtor in this area. Can you handle that volume? Would you like us to do the same thing we did with Mary Realtor? My conversation changes. I don't need to say, hey, we'd like to offer you a little try. No, no. Now I'm leveraging results. Like, hey, here's what we can do. Here's what we've done. We're going to work with someone like you. Can you handle it? If not, we need to go to the next person, right? But this model right here allows us to start that, right? It allows us to get to that point where we can start getting our foot in the door when we don't have much experience, right? We start with the best offer on the planet. Hey, keep your wallet in your pants. Let me show you some results. Then let's discuss those results afterward and see if it makes sense to move forward, right? I don't have to have any experience. I've, I've removed the risk, right? I removed the risk. So now I can come in get started, show them what I can do, and then build from there and the sky's the limit. Exactly. Jason, can, I, can I can I ask for a clarity moment here? I love what you're sharing here because we teach the Trojan horse method of leading with one and then yeah. expanding once you've landed in the business. Um, so for those that are brand new and maybe don't have a lot of experience going into the market with these services, what's the difference between, let's say, reputation management and reviews that we're going to talk about next three days, essentially, versus, let's say, just leading with SEO for free and not charging them? Like what one yeah. it, to me, it's the delivery side. Right. James is laughing. But these <laughs> these are real questions from real people. That's like, well, why yeah. can't I why can't I just go out there with this heavy service? Can you provide some clarity of how difficult? that is as a provider and then also can you uh, one of you just talk about the difficulty in targeting and entering a marketplace right with a heavy offer right yeah so this is real this is a process that uh, uh, is exactly what something james and i talk about regularly in the training and it, it involves what we like to call quick win strategies versus uh results later strategies right when we're doing a trial, we're trying to get our foot in the door. When we want to impress someone, especially when we have no experience and we're coming in without a bunch of you know uh, case studies and whatnot, what we want to do, the first service we want to offer is something that gets very fast results. It's no different than that Netflix, right? I turn on Netflix, the trial starts, I'm immediately in there, I'm immediately enjoying the content. And that's essentially what we want to do with the service. So if we just kind of look at this scale of services here that we have in front of us. Rep management, well, actually to start at the other end, SEO, that's what we like to call a customer's later. It's, it's a garden analogy, right? If I go out and if I grab some seeds and I go plant them out back, plant the garden out back, I don't run inside, grab a dinner plate and run back out and say, all right, I can't wait to eat from my garden tonight, right? It's going to take several weeks, months of nurturing and tending to that garden but then what eventually happens? That garden will sprout, bloom, do whatever. And then I will be able to take the plate out and grab fruit and vegetables and whatnot from my garden every night. And so that's kind of what SEO is. It's one of those things where I have to, I have to do work, tend to it. And eventually Google gets enough of the signals that it's going to push my business, my client's assets to the top of Google. That process, though, takes a lot of time. If I'm trying to get someone to work with me, I don't have that time. I don't have six months to wait around and say, hey, don't worry, results are coming. I'm going to show you I can do things. What I want to do is I want to start with what we call either customers now service, essentially something that has a quick win around it where I can execute it. And I would like to call it the faucet. Like I flip on the faucet, water comes out right away. But when I turn it off, the, the water stops. That's these other services here. So reputation management, message marketing, by the way, you might be saying, what the hell is message marketing? That's just something, that's just a word I made out to make it sound sexy and cool. It is simply a, it, essentially what we'd call like a database reactivation. It's a, it's an email and a text sequence to uh, send an offer out. And then of course, lead generation is me running ads on either Facebook or Google. Those are all kind of faucet services. They're quick wins. I can flip a switch and they start working. Reputation management, I have a list of people in there. I flip on the switch, they're immediately getting review requests. I can immediately start seeing reviews, you know? And so anytime I want to go, so to, to address the full spectrum of the question, if I want to go into any kind of market and, and, I'm, and I have really no results to leverage or bring to the table, you know, we like the trial model. We love this model, but you got to do it correctly by using services at the beginning of this whole process 
that are going to give me that quick win because I want to be in and out of this trial as soon as possible. If, it, if I can be done in 24 hours saying, hey, look at these great results we've provided. Now here's the investment to move forward. The faster I get the money, the better. So I, I don't want to be leveraging services that are going to drag on and, to, and, and take forever for me to show a result. Add them to the end of the process where they're already happy and I have results coming in on a regular basis where they're not caring that you know, a month has gone by and their website isn't, you know, three spots higher in Google. They don't care about that because they're getting good reviews. They're getting appointments and sales from our message marketing campaigns. They're getting new leads coming into the process that are turning to appointments and sales through our lead generation. We're holding them over, keeping them satisfied and happy. So our longer term services have a chance to kick in and take effect. And so structuring it that way allows you to keep them, keep them happy, get them happy right away. And then keep them happy and paying you over the long term, keep them sticky and ultimately fully deploy your whole portfolio of services, which provide tremendous value when they're all together working, which is more value to you too, right? The more services I sell, the, the more money I'm making. But the flip side of that is the more services I sell, the best results you're getting for your clients. I love that. And and the higher you go, one thing people may not even notice is these are productized services at the low end of the ascension. The higher you go, you're dependent on human capital and talent. Like you need to have very yes. creative and very talented people to sustain a lead generation business where reputation management is really just, you know, a fundamental like tech, like it's just technology that you're enabling and getting out of the way. So that also creates variation in churn and, you know, inability to keep clients long term. And okay. then account managers are pissed off. And then the sales got to go, you know, they got to go get more, more sales and they get more pissed off. Anyways, back to back to you guys on how it all translates to the world. Yeah, real quick, Jason, I'm just going to jump in here because. Yeah. <laughs> and the again, the Ascension then you know, and at the end of all these three days, you kind of understand is when you can, oh, the heck. Oh, I, it's at the end. Sorry. Forget it. Is we're going to package these together, but that, that slide is at the end. Let, Jason, I'm just going to run through these really quick. I yeah. added these like last minute. So when we're looking at this, right, and we're looking at the moving up the ascension rep management trials into saying like, hey, let's move into an ongoing monthly retainer of rep management. We're using the the trial right to get our foot in the door, and then moving up the value ladder. And so the question that you should ask is, do you want thirty clients at one hundred ninety seven dollars a month, which is about seventy thousand nine hundred twenty dollars a year? with an uh, average client value of 2,400 or five clients at let's say 2,000 a month. I'm just curious in the chat, what would you guys rather have? We see. Do you guys see the, yeah. the, you yeah. see the new screen? Yes. <clears throat> and so if we take a look really quick and we <clears throat> just, just for the, to understand the power of it, right? If we have, let's say you're getting paid $297 a month from, <clears throat> you start with zero clients and you add one new client a month, okay, just one, one new client a month, and let's say the overhead is 50 bucks a client. By the end of the year, you would have made $16,000 and at about 2,700 a month recurring revenue. And if we just change this and said, all I want is five clients, and they're, let's say they're average paying $1,997 a month, and we're not adding any new clients, we have a little more cost because we're doing more stuff for them. It's just the power of it, right? It's just the power of higher ticket. Starting off low ticket, finding a way to create the value, adding more services to increase the client value. You just need less clients to make a lot more money. That That's the whole point of, of what we're kind of going through here. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay, so actually let's finish this um, in terms of, do, do you guys, have you realized that your offer has already been built? Do you guys who have been watching very closely of what the best offer, especially if you're in the beginning, a matter of fact, I don't care if you're in the beginning or, or in the middle, you have five, six clients, seven clients. Do you guys understand what the offer is? 
Yes. I'm, I'm getting a lot of yeses. Does, yeah, we're getting a ton of yeses. Okay. <laughs> so everybody's essentially, celebrating, everybody's celebrating Matt Stanley over there. <laughs> Thanks, nice. Matt. <laughs> but yes, go ahead. Sorry, James. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, no. So the offer is actually, Jason, you finish off the offer. Yeah, so essentially, you know, we're going to use a trial. We're going to get our foot in the door using a trial. And why is that, again, why is that important? Just to drive home that point is what if I'm brand new, right? This is a common thing. What if I'm brand new and I have zero experience? Is anyone ever going to be working with me? Well, uh, yeah, of course, no matter what, because if no one new could ever get a new client, then there would only be like two or three <laughs> people total that that's running agencies, right? So, but in the end, this offer right? All we're doing is mimicking a proven process trials. You guys have done trials a million times in, in various aspects of your life. We're going to use a trial, but again, when you're doing a trial, it has to be a quick win. How can I get a very quick result? And to address another question I've seen is like, yeah, but how do you like get, keep them interested? You use a high perceived value service. Every business owner on the planet understands the power of a good review. You'll never talk to a business owner that doesn't understand the power of having a good review about their business online. So we're leveraging a very high perceived value service that is very cheap and easy for us to offer that we can do it on this trial kind of basis that gets a quick result. Again, I I, I add contacts to the workflow. The setup and, and running of this will be shown uh, uh, later on. So don't worry about uh, for those that had those questions. But immediately, as soon as I turn the faucet on, add people to this campaign, emails go out, texts go out, like reviews can start happening like literally within 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour. And we've seen that kind of thing. Any of you that have run database reactivation campaigns, have seen how fast those things, those things work. Reputation management is really not that much different. There's a few extra steps in there, but it happens very fast. It's a visual. I can literally go to the business owner and say, look, when we started this process, you had 20 reviews there on Google or zero reviews or five reviews. Look, now you have 10, you have 30, whatever that is. It's a very, it's very easy to see the, the, the result and that value. Every business owner understands that value. So we're using rep management as that mechanism. That's that quick win strategy that we're going to use to get our foot in the door so that we can start this baby Yoda process, if you will of building value for that client, selling multiple services, get the results that will then leverage to uh, to close other deals in the future. If we bring in this kind of full circle in this value ladder setup is you got your free trial, you got your on, ongoing rep management, and then you know message marketing is what we call it, lead generation and SEO, you could potentially package it, right? That's where I come up with the $2,000 a month or the $4,000 a month is by now, they know, they like, they trust you. You've gotten them results. They trust you to get more results. They want to add more services to um, to these campaigns and, to, and for you to do. And now we can now package to make them a high ticket client from a trial and a low ticket client. All right. And so that brings me back to the process. Again, you have your niche. You're going to be prospecting. Typically, if you're new, maybe in the uh, in your warm market, and then we get into the, uh, something called the client qualification interview. Now, there's not enough time to go through all these things, right? I'm just overall giving this, but I, I will be giving away all of these scripts at the end of day one. I don't know if I, did we say that in the beginning? I don't remember. Yeah, I said yeah that. we did. We, we, th that was part of the, uh, all the different materials that you're going to be getting. Uh, by the way, you, you're going to get a ton of different things. Some of the things we may cover during the live or not, but at least we'll provide you. Yeah. Uh, I think, James, you said you're going to provide like courses or trainings to at least be able to go through that in a different format as well. Yeah, yeah. All I did on this screenshot, I wanted, just wanted to share this because people will ask, all right, well, you mentioned client qualification interview. I don't know what that is. Well, every step of the process there is a script there is a process there is a form that you guys can use in order to get through each process now i do want to also point out um some like you know after you do uh, one or two clients in trial you may have the results to just not even do trials anymore i think it's important to understand that is that you're not you don't have to do trials for the rest of your life this is about getting results that are good enough to then show 
future prospects and you just skip the whole trial to begin with like you're just now you 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 have the results you have the confidence you have the ability to know for a fact you you will fulfill and get results well then you don't even need to offer that anymore right yeah. and so that uh, just an important point to uh touch upon I love that because right. we always talk about the launch strategy being different than the scale strategy. And this is some of those details, like you're not going to have a trial forever and feel like you're right. devaluing your brand or your positioning. Just remember right. that this is just getting you started and launched. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then just to finish this off, if it makes sense, uh, it always makes sense to offer additional services to clients. It provides them more value, creates a system of services working together to get them better results, right? You can only get a certain amount of results with one service. They want more results. So what better way to add more services? And upselling is so much easier if you're already getting them the results. There is no hard selling. There's no more getting to know you. They already know you. They know what you can do. They trust you. And you're simply offering the next logical service or services, moving them up the value ladder and helping them address more of their pain points. Because I can almost guarantee that most people who are struggling to get reviews online are also struggling to get uh, clients and, and getting their brand out. And they're, just, they're always going to be struggling most of the time with everything in their business, right? And so that's the next step. And uh, easier to sell to someone that's already bought from you before, especially if you got them results. Again, this is just more of the same stuff. Um, when you offer more services to your clients, now it gives you the opportunity to provide them more value. You'll help them. Uh, you, you'll help your clients get even more value from you. You'll keep your clients sticky, and you'll make more money with less clients. Essentially, all right. All right, cool. So basically, two types of prospecting. Um, we categorize them: warm or cold. Right, warm prospects are prospects to send, again these are our kind of definitions of them prospects that are going to come to you they're inbound they're 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 seeking you out okay they could be referred by a mutual party the big thing to know is that they typically close at a higher percent right it's that whole no like trust kind of thing or again if i'm seeking out right uh, if i'm hungry and i go to the hot dog stand like more than likely hot dog stand is going to get that sale right i'm coming to them and i already have the desire the need Cold prospecting is, is on the opposite spectrum of that. That's where they potentially don't even know who I am and they're not asking for anything. It's me approaching someone out of the blue and saying, hey, I have this thing, you might be interested, You know, let's have a conversation about that. And as you would expect, that's just gonna be typically a lower close percent um, than it is with the warm prospecting because I'm, I'm seeking them out. Now, with a solid offer, right? The offer is everything, right? Whether I'm running ads, whether I'm selling agency services, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, the offer trumps anything and everything. If I can get essentially a, a, a low risk way for people to say yes, that just makes it easy. Um, then I'm, I'm going to win. And so that's, that's kind of tying everything that we've been talking about. You're going to end up tapping into warm prospecting first, but understand that your scale may be limited in that fashion. So you potentially will need to tap into cold prospecting where you're going out to other people. And so our process helps make this easy where we can have that blend and we have that high percent close on the warm, but also when we need to go out to start the scale, to start finding other opportunities on our own, um, we have a good solid offer that can help that percentage uh, close go up. All right. And so, we kick off the process. We want to start off with warm, right? If we can tap into a warm prospecting method right away, then all the benefit for us, right? Again, get people interested in coming to us, uh, or sorry, get people um, in, in our network that's already warmed up to us and get them, again, interested in maybe doing business with us. We like to use what we call the arms reach method as our first prospecting method because it's the easiest and it has a high percent close, right? And so this is something that, you know, vault members is our coaching program, but this is just, it's the number two way um, over the history of our program over the last seven years that people have landed clients. It's something James and I had used at our agencies. It's a non-salesy way to announce what it is that you're doing. Because one of the big fears of whenever I start a business is like, man, I'm so nervous to tell anybody about it because I feel kind of salesy or I feel kind of scuzzy and scammy and whatnot. And so this is a nice, easy way 
for you to tap into your network and basically tell people what you're doing without being a, having a direct nasty salesy approach that we get that that icky feeling. Um, it's an easy way to leverage our network for a warmer introduction. It essentially creates a referral based environment. And it's the beauty of this is it is niche blind, meaning I can I can just use what we'll, we'll give you the statement here in a second. I can just use it and not even mention a niche so I can just attract opportunities or I could list a niche in it. But what we're going to do is we're going to post what we call our arms reach post. You're just going to post it on your on your Facebook. Now you can post it across any of your social medias. And and here it is. So why you're why you're looking at it? This is this this is the actual post right here. I, let me tell you about the psychology behind it. Right, everything's worded a very specific way, and the reason why it's worded this way is because again, to get rid of that salesy feeling, none of us wants to go out and say, "Hey, if you have a business, you know, hit me up." Right, especially if you haven't having posted in a while. Right, you don't want to be that person who's like, "Hey, I'm asking all you guys." for business. Now, this is kind of an insidious way for you to essentially ask for referrals while also telling people in your network that you are doing this specific type of work. So we say, hey, how, does anyone know any small businesses? Not, again, understand, we're not saying, hey, do you own a small business? We're not saying that. We're saying, do you know anyone that owns a small business looking to bring in some extra revenue? And you can see the rest of the script. And what that's doing is, if you do have someone in your network, which here's a, here's the thing also that we hear. Yeah, I, I don't have any friends that are, that, are, that are business owners. I why, why am I even wasting time doing this? You don't know what you don't know, and you don't know who your network knows. Okay, we've had people. One of my favorite stories is when someone someone did this in our group, and they came back and was like, "Holy cow! Well, I did not know this, but my friend knows, knows one of the largest car dealers in Florida, and he got me set up. He's like, dude, you should talk to Peter, who I didn't even know. And anyway, they end up setting up this, this meeting. So you don't know who, who you don't know, but, but what happens is anyone in your network potentially sees this, and it's, and it's evergreen, right? It's not something you're just going to delete. It's going to sit there. We've had people come six months later, say, hey, I seen this post. And so what it does is just simply it kind of announces what you're doing. And so someone can be like, all right, yeah, I know so-and-so. But what it also does is if you have people in your network, and you might even already know that, but you just kind of been scared to approach them, what this does is announce it because they may say, well, I don't know anybody, but, but hell, hey, dude, it's it's me. I, I'm a realtor, man. Can you do this for me? Right? And that, that effect has happened over and over just with this simple little script here. So it's kind of a little insidious way to kind of tap into your network without you feeling all weird about it. Yeah. And I, by the way, I would encourage everybody who has never done this to take this screenshot it and go do it. And and if you don't want to all say the same thing, you can, you could copy this and throw it into chat GPT and say, Hey, can you just like, you know, reword this a little bit? And I will guarantee tomorrow when we come back, people will post and say, Oh my God, like I didn't even realize that, I, you know, what Jason just said, like yeah. somebody reached out to me. I don't even know what to do now. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a quick question for you both, uh, and I'm gonna ask this on behalf of the entrepreneurs that just started off and don't have a client just yet. Uh, Y'all remember that show? I don't know, maybe on Discovery Channel. There's like the whole myth busting thing, and they like try to defact whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Do so. If I post this, do I need to have some kind of a knowledge base or understanding? of how to fulfill this thing? Or should I learn the fulfillment and go post after? Like, what's the, does the chicken come before the egg? Like, you know, cause a lot of times it's almost like an excuse that I don't know enough about the fulfillment that I'm not gonna do any sales, you know? But but I, in reality, what's your recommendation of like a chronological order on this? So the way we say it is like, for one, you'll never know as much as you think you need to know. Right. We always have this quest for knowledge. Like, I, I just once I get a few more details, but we we don't know because we don't know what we don't know. So those quests for details never stop and it just delays action. And delay is the biggest, uh, I guess, opposite, if you will, of success. Right. Delay is what it is, not inaction. It's just pretending that we are taking action and delaying the actual the actual action. But the second piece is, and I always say this, James, and I always say this is like, look, I can tell you, here's one thing that I can guarantee. Actually, two things I can guarantee. The sun 
is always going to rise. And there's always going to be someone that knows how to push the buttons. There's a million, hey, some of you out there right now, you, you might be guilty of this right now. You're like, man, I know, go high level in and out. Uh, but I'm just so nervous to go talk to anybody, <laughs> right? We all have this, 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 this network that we're in that I promise you, there's always people that are, we'll, we'll, we'll just ram down the door to be able to push the buttons and do things but they hide behind the door when it comes to actually going out and getting clients. So I can assure anyone that wants to do this and you're nervous about, well, what if they, what if they this and that, right? We can, what if ourselves to death, but here is what you do. If someone responds to this, you literally come to that group, come back to this group and you say, holy cow, I did what James said. I posted the arms reach post. And now I got this thing happening right now. Who wants to partner up with me on this opportunity? Because in the end, you have an opportunity sitting in front of you and there's nothing stopping you from who cares if if you close that deal and you end up splitting profits or any of that kind of thing like that it doesn't matter you've got the win that you can now leverage gives you confidence and and so on and so forth to build from and and just to add on to that uh paulson i mean what we're going through today and tomorrow and then uh, you know uh wednesday there's nobody here that won't be able to push the buttons that we're going to be going through. This is, that's the whole point of this. The whole point, the, the entire point of this is to eliminate that, that fear of, I don't know how, because this service, especially with go high level is literally where you can take the snapshot, get it in there and you'll know how to run it in five minutes, 10 minutes. Like it's all set up for you. Yeah. You need to understand a little bit of a go yeah. high level. It's fine. But the whole point is, is that, so you don't have to worry about, the button pushing but if you don't want to do it like jason said the, the next thing to do is find somebody who will do it with you partner up and you know split the 400 bucks whatever it might be yeah and and let me provide a friendly suggestion to a lot of you that may not even be on high level just yet and this is maybe your day one or first workshop you're ever watched uh james and jason are gonna go pretty tech heavy tomorrow and day three to really unpack the fulfillment of the assembly line. So if you don't have a high level account, today would be a great day to just jump in. I don't even mean to be salesy. It doesn't really matter whether you take us up on this or not. Take your time. Like at some point you're, you're going to be in our family is how I feel if you're an agency or a marketing person. But I welcome you to just jump into a trial because tomorrow you can go step by step and snapshot by snapshot. And we're going to be giving away snapshots. Basically, they are automation blueprints that you build as your IP. You can distribute, copy, pass, share, however you want. But the, you need a snapshot to start an account and duplicate. But either way, jump into the trial as soon as you can. So tomorrow, you're not just kind of watching on the sidelines. But so, Jason, I like the way you're positioned this. This is a B2B seed out there in the world of marketing. They say, hey, can I, can I tap into your network is what you're asking to your existing network. So you're not going directly to the business owners. You're essentially asking for an alley-oop. Exactly. Exactly. It just helps remove a little bit of the pressure that we all have when we're just getting started of like asking. We all have this weird thing about asking friends. And, and look, I get it. I get it, but un I don't want to say unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, they are also, your network is some of your best client opportunities just sitting there in front of you that most people just are scared to tap into because because they're, they don't know how to approach it. And this kind of just disarms the defenses uh, of the network without sounding salesy like I'm coming after them. And it makes me more comfortable as well. Like, hey, I'm, I'm asking for referrals. You'd expect no less from any of your other people in your network. If, if they have an opportunity, if they're looking for someone to refer to somebody, this is just taps into all that. Just a little bit of psychology to help us get around those normal roadblocks to ask in our network for opportunities. Yeah. Well, and it also, for, it also forces the hand because, you know, one of, I've done some shorts about this is, you know, we, we get into this business and then we don't tell anybody about it. Like we, we literally are like, I don't know what it is. Like the, if you want success extremely fast in any business, if you open up a brick and mortar, if you, it doesn't matter. What's the first thing you should be doing? You should get all, all your friends and family should become your clients. Right. And it, it should be assumed. And for some reason, when it's like this online business, everybody's like, 
I'm afraid to tell people, right? I had a, a, a quick story because I know we're going to be end up running out of time. But my best friend was he was like, I'm going to run. I'm going to do it. He's a teacher. I'm going to do this. I'm going to you know, I'm going to run this business. And he was always in the weeds, just constantly. Like, oh, I got to learn this first. I got to learn this first. No matter what I said, it didn't, <laughs> didn't matter. And then COVID hit and all that stuff. And he came back about a year ago and he's like, what's the first thing I should do? I go, pick up your phone and just every, you know, the guy knows so many people. I'm like, just tell people what you're doing. Post it on your LinkedIn, post it on your Facebook. And immediate, it was like immediately, it was a $7,000 website from a doctor, another $7,000 website. And it was just like, the, and then he posted the website on his LinkedIn. And then he had like three other doctors like, oh, I didn't know you did this. It's just, if you just talk and you just, and this kind of forces you to do it, right? Forces you to do it in a way that you kept telling yourself, you're not, I can't tell anybody. I can't tell anybody. Well, go post this. And now you you started telling people. So yeah, I got to switch to that double tap method. Jason, this is all you, man. You know, this stuff too. Well, I gotta, I gotta let you run with this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And so essentially what we want to do once we tap into our network essentially and, and get that post out there. And again, Nothing may come of that. It doesn't matter. It's the action, right? We just want to get the actions, gets the ball rolling, gets the steps going. Now we have a process where we can start reaching out to people, essentially a hybrid processing uh, prospecting method that we can go after businesses that are potentially going to be a good fit for us. Um, and we call it the double tap just as a little snazzy little way of just saying, hey, we're going to hit them two different ways, two different communication methods. And, and we're going to reach out to businesses that have a clear need for our services. And the beauty about uh, reputation management is it gives us um, very clear guidelines on who needs help potentially and who doesn't. Um, like if they have no reviews on their Google My Business, or, or this is kind of old, Google Business Profile, I believe is now called, uh, they have new reviews there. Well, that's that's potentially an opportunity for me to help a business start getting reviews. Um, maybe there's no um, reviews on our Google business profile and also isn't claimed. That's another option um, to target. I can target people with bad reviews. Again, bad reviews is anyone that can that is compared to their competitors has a lower rating and or lower review amount. In the end, we can really reach out to anyone as long as we frame it correctly. And we'll talk about a few frames that we have in terms of identifying businesses. So we'll, we'll pop to the next slide. Sorry, I'm like back and forth. Yeah, no big deal. So like, for example, here's a great, here's a here's just an easy example, right? We have Plumber right here. Uh, this was in Sherman Oaks, uh, California, where I was living there. Um, very easy search allows me to see that, hey, Berlin Plumbing compared to the stacked up against their competitors, all I did was take a quick little screenshot that I could leverage and show them. We'll talk about that in a second, but very clear that this person could use a review service and heck, even just to point it out also, even right below the Sherman Oaks, even though I didn't highlight them here, the Sherman Oaks plumber has six reviews. You can see that even though it's five stars compared to these other plumbers that have, you know, one has 23, one has 52, I could, I, I could reach out. It's just a matter of being able to look and saying, all right, this person could benefit from my reputation management service in a very clear, I don't have to guess, right? I'm not guessing here. Like it's very clear that there's a need, right? Next slide. Okay. Now this is an example of a business that did not have a claimed Google business profile. You'd be surprised in the Google maps listings, you can search any niche in any location and you're bound to find plenty of people. Now I know this 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 might be a little old looking in the process might be a little bit different in terms of what the visuals look like but the, but it's really the same. There's there's Google business profiles out there that aren't even claimed, right? The business owner has no clue that because remember Google just creates these things, these Google business profiles out there in the maps listings by scraping data, right? They found out that this business was created, you know, on a, on a document somewhere and so they create this business profile out there, but it doesn't mean the, the business knows about it. It's one it, 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 real quick. It's important to understand that you will know going through any sort of agency type training, you're going to know more than 99.9% .9 more than any business owner you talk to. Okay. Yep. Plumbers, when they go to their trade school, 
They don't sit for hours learning marketing of their business. They're learning how to become a plumber. Dentists, when they go to dental school, they're not taking hours upon hours of marketing, right? No one is taught this stuff. No one is, or sorry, no one is born with this stuff in their head. And most business owners, they are good and they learn and are become good at what it is they do. Marketing is what we do, right? Marketing is what we do. And that's why we become good at it. They become good at plumbing, being a chiropractor, being a dentist. They become good at that. And they leverage people like us to do the marketing stuff, right? And so it's just important to know that these businesses that you're out there interacting with, you might be saying, well, what? maybe they'll claim their Google business profile. They don't probably don't even know it exists. <laughs> They're not told when they become a business owner, hey, by the way, Google's going to create this little thing for you. Just keep an eye out for it. No one knows. No one knows this stuff, okay? So this is why we can go out, identify these needs, and highlight it to the business, right? And that's, that's our foot in the door when it comes to prospecting. So here, again, here's another version of a business that is out there. It's clear to see that they are lagging their competition. And heck, they haven't even claimed their Google business profile, okay? Here's another example. Where I talk about kind of lower reviews. Like this person, right? What we say earlier, the people that scream the loudest typically are the people that had the worst experiences. LK Plumbing here might be a fine company. They might, they might have a long service record and have many satisfied customers, but they probably don't have a process, potentially don't have a process to leverage and co collect and leverage reviews. Whereas, you know, mainland, they might not have a process either. They only have nine reviews, but they just got lucky. And the people that left their reviews are five stars, right? And then you can see down below the competitor, uh, Ruder Plumbing, they have 102 reviews, 4.5. So it's a matter of when I'm looking for companies to potentially reach out to, I'm, I'm looking at it in terms of a frame. If I sent this screenshot to LK Plumbing and communicated to them about it, they don't have, I don't, I don't need to be a good salesman. I'm just pointing out the obvious that they can clearly see with their eyes. I don't have to come in with some slick sales tactic. They can look at that and say, holy heck, yes, <laughs> I am behind my competitors who are literally above and beyond, uh, by, uh, below me. Next. So these are just example opportunities that we can reach out to, right, to, to identify businesses um, just yeah, very I'll, clearly I'll, with I'll, our eyes on who might be a good candidate. And then- James, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I also want, because this is what we've been utilizing a lot lately, um, is if you, again, have go high level, uh, I'm going to pull up the prospecting tool. I was, I was just about to ask you guys if you are going to use it because it's pretty new. Like it's, uh, I think it's still in beta. And one of the things that we do in high level is we roll out a ton of features left and right in beta and allow you to go into our lab section and turn it on and off. So I know this was pretty out of pretty recent out of beta. So everything you're seeing is very, um, I would say, in the skateboard model. We haven't built the car or the plane around this feature just yet. But this this thing has been uh, pretty popular. I'm curious to see how y'all are leveraging this. Well, I I mean, instead of going out and Typing in, uh, you know, dentist near me and trying to figure out which ones it is. Your this tool just tells you. Now, a matter of fact, not only does it tell you, it it gives you a conversion rate. How yeah. likely are you to land them as a client based on basically their brand? Like for example, Smile Partners. Then, by the way, all I did was put dentist near me. Um, you know, they have 118 rays, four and a half. You're probably not going to land them. It's unlikely, right? They they kind of have their stuff together. But if you start to look a little bit deeper, um, I actually just pulled this, so I haven't gone through these. And it might take a while to load because I'm running Zoom as well. Yeah. But here, this one's already run. So if we take a look at Wayne Smiles, okay, and we save that as a prospect, it'll build the report for us that we actually can <laughs> use during the double tap instead of taking like screenshots and putting arrows yeah so all you need to do is build yeah. this what's that 
So yeah, it just simple it simplifies the process that we're kind of describing here. Yeah, makes it easy. Yeah. So so the old way was you go find a scraping tool out there, find some prospects that make sense, and then go build a bunch of screenshots and find their emails somehow or e text messages or whatever. Then educate them that they're missing X Y Z out of five or six things, and then go send out some sort of a report manually built on whatever. The prospecting tool and then hope that they actually see it or deliver it right we yeah. built all of that in, inside of high level under one one feature which is what you're seeing with james uh and you're looking at high level inside the agency view on the left side of menu there's a ton of different things prospecting allows you to just put in a zip code or a city and just say okay let me find the people that are missing xyz things those xyz things are typically uh, live web chat, GMB, uh, WordPress, reviews, um, I think something with addresses if you haven't claimed your listings and stuff like that. Uh, but it just gives you like a full report of, hey, these are the businesses that are mixing, missing these things. Then on top of that, the system, one click like J J James just did, allows you to see a PDF clean professional report that's totally white labeled, by the way. And you can yeah. just click export PDF and just send it over if you want. Let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because it gets exciting, right? Because everything that we've spent four or five years doing and teaching and, and saying like, these are the steps to do it. Now we've been utilizing Go High Level massively to do this because the speed of implementation, you could literally share the report. I just pulled this because it takes a little bit to uh, load, especially when I'm running Zoom. But essentially, this is what it is. They have a claim status. They don't have any text enabled on their business phone number. The WordPress site is whatever. No chat. Um, they do reply on the reviews. This is a whole nother, you know, we'll talk about AI and replying on reviews tomorrow. And then it kind of gives them like, look, you know, depending on where they are, here's the, they're comparing them to um, their competitors, right? Like this person's got one, oh, I mean, one star. That's a great prospect. And then, you know, you start, I don't want to dive too much into local SEO type stuff, but, you know, name, address, phone number. If things don't match, they're not going to be ranking anywhere. They're not going to be ranking in the listings. And again, I don't want to get too deep into this. Um, but Google, Google, my business ratings, as you can see, it's a 3.4. This is a great prospect. You could send in the report. You do the double, as we call the double tap method. And instead of doing it with screenshots, you're doing it with the report. Yep. And so I just wanted to show that because I think it's extremely powerful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a, tool, yeah. It's a matter of, uh, uh bottom line is, is identifying businesses that could use your help. Again, that goes to saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to approach the businesses that are more likely to make sense for them to want to do business with me. Helps me increase that close rate versus just randomly reaching out to people, right? And so, in the end, it's very simple here. Again, we like to we like to make everything sounds complex, but in the end, it's very simple. All we are doing, as I mentioned, the double tap is literally just reaching out to prospects with two different communication methods. In this case, uh, we typically able to leverage like Facebook Messenger and email. And all it's doing is the more uh, the more I reach out, or sorry, the, the more ways I reach out to someone, the more likely I am to reach them so that they can at least see my message. Now, I can't remember if we discussed it in here. What I typically will have people do is you start off with a, a social media message and an email, and then you follow up the next day or later on that day with a phone call. And that kind of go, alludes to what uh, Paulson was talking about earlier about how do you take a cold pro, you know, in the end, it's like, if we know warm prospecting closes more deals, how do we take a cold prospect and make them warm? Well, this is essentially allowing me to take a cold call, what would normally be a cold call and make it a warm call by me simply calling and following up. Now we have scripts and everything and what we say in the double tap. I just wanted to add that piece in there that it's not exclusive. It's not just, oh, Facebook message or email. Well, why can't I do, you can, you can do anything you want. And again, one of the best ways to increase the yeah. uh, the opportunity to connect is follow up with a call the next day and say, "Hey, I just wanted to check in on the message I sent about your uh, about the negative reviews I seen on Google, right?" And yeah. now it's like, "Well, wait a minute, this person have I already talked to this person before?" It, it just drives home a, a little bit more of a connection.
Yeah. In in the grand scheme of things, y'all, remember your ultimate advantage is that you're you're the giver. You're the giver of value. You're providing value to the business and saying, hey, listen, I have something for you. Here's a report. Here's how you can fix this, whether you use me or not. Standard sales guys in the world of marketing, they're asking, they're asking, they're asking, they're asking. So from a sales psychology standpoint, you have a lot of advantage because you can go into you know, offsetting uh, something for free. This is a free trial where you're adding value. You're not asking for money. You're you're saying, let me stand on my results and show you how I can change something, then win you over on a real relationship long term. So remember, you're you're in the position of giving in the sales psychology mechanism. Keep going, keep going. Yep. Yeah. And you know, and in the end, what we're all we're trying to do is get the conversation started so that we can eventually have what we call the CQI client communication interview. Is it just it's just a Q&A session. Have a Q&A session with them to make sure that we can help them find out more about their business and ways we can help them. And then we just close them on what we call the simple trial. And again, we're targeting businesses that clearly need our help. So our, the odds are in our favor, right? It's a it's a matter of, like Paulson says, we're we're not coming out of the blue saying, oh, we're going to harm your business. We're trying to help them, right? We're, we're, bi- we're I like to say we're business doctors, right? You've identified symptoms. And as a doctor, it's, it's your responsibility to at least share, Hey, here's, here's what we're seeing. And, you know, here's some solutions for it. It's up, it's up to the person to take the advice, but there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You're, you're, you're reaching out to help them. Yep. Okay. Uh, next slide. Let's let's, again, we started with the end in mind, right? The process real quick, just cause I want to hammer this in everybody's brains is again, niche prospecting, preferably warm, Okay, preferably warm because it's easier. Then we do have a client qualification interview. I'm going to give this at the end. Okay, you guys will, um, Paulson will show you where to get, you know, all the stuff that we're talking about. Then it goes to a trial close. Remember, we're offering the trial. When you close them on a trial, you're going to onboard them. That's simply ask them a few questions about their business. And then from trial, we now want to get them on a retainer. Right, is different things to say now when you get them on a retainer. Now, when you're onboarding them, there's a few more things you need to onboard them, and then when you know, a month or two months later, maybe right away, depends on on you and your personality. We go for the upsell, and then now when they're extremely happy, here's where a lot of people forget. Most people forget. Remember, we've taught this to over eight thousand people. Most people forget that when they have a happy client. The first thing you need to do is ask them for referrals. And I always give this story on our Wednesday night Q&As. I always tell this story to remind people. My father, my father's very good friend was a gym teacher, okay? He wanted to make extra money, so he started selling life insurance. I know, life insurance. Not one time, he's now 77, 76, has made 2 to $3 million a year for the last 30 years has never ran an ad in his entire life. Doesn't even know, wouldn't even know how, right? What he did was when he closed them on that kitchen table, that's how life insurance used to be sold, still a lot of times to this day, he didn't get up until he had three names. Never did. He wouldn't even leave. It's I need three names. You know, you you sh- you told me how important it was to protect your family why do you think it's not okay for you not to share three people that you care about so I can go and help protect their family, right? Never did. And that's how he built his entire business. When you're with a, a business and you've gotten them great results and they're so happy with you, why wouldn't they? Why? It's called reciprocity. They want you to ask them for referrals. They want to be the one to refer you to somebody who needs your help. And so we have this referral automation. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, which once they become your client, now maybe you don't trust yourself to ask. Well, this referral automation will ask for you, okay? It's built to kick off once you land them as a client, and then that automation kicks off, basically trying to get them back on the phone for like a two-week checkup, and on that two-week checkup, you ask them for referrals, right? It's, you know, because a lot of people they get a little nervous about it. And so that is... That's the process. And then when you get a referral, you go back into the client qualification interview and you repeat the process over and over and over again. Okay. 
listen, I always hear people saying, I want to run ads for my agency. If you do this right, you don't ever have to. You don't because it, it's like a, a, it's its own flywheel. You get happy clients, ask for a referral, get a referral, bring them through the qualification interview to see what they need. You could skip the trial, get them on a retainer and repeat the process. All right. I just wanted to hammer that home. All right. Uh, what's next? Okay. Yes, so we... There's a couple giveaways, yeah. What's that? I said, I think that's actually, yeah, there's just a couple giveaways left. Yeah, yeah. So I... I... I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. Does anybody here have an agent? I, let me repeat that. Put a one in the chat. By the way, Paulson, do we have a little bit of time, like another 15, 20 minutes? Uh, we do. And um, the only thing we had promised everybody is the link to the 30-day trial as oh, part of the oh. workshop. Um, so, yeah, Oops. those of you that are watching and you don't have a high-level account, we do have a special offer which is a 30-day trial instead of a 14-day trial that gives you like a full month to get set up uh and i'm weary of that sometimes because i don't want you to be lazy for 30 days before you get started on okay. sales but right. um we want to make sure you have that available to you um which which the link is right here james uh for your uh offer which is when you go to that site it's a landing page um you'll have two options one as a new customer who's never had high level one as an existing customer who already have a plan. It allows you to go in-app, either start a trial or upgrade. Uh, and if you do that, you get all the giveaways that, well, not the $500 cash and t-shirts and all that, but the <laughs> snapshot stuff that you really need. Uh, James and uh, Jason and their team, they're going to give all that away if you sign up. Uh, as a brand new trial. Now, for those of you that already have an existing account, uh, choose the second option. Uh, James, do you want to pull up that site if you don't mind? Just go ahead and go to that link. You can, you can. This uh... one. Okay, so this is going to be. So this is the snapshot name is called uh, Day One Final Snapshot. And if anybody is new, right, you don't understand this. You're simply going to, and you're just getting your trial. You I'm sorry, simply... James. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. Is there any way you can make this larger? Can you go yeah. larger on your browser? Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that that's much okay. easier. Okay. Uh, when you import, right? When you import the snapshot, it lives here. Okay. So this is, is you know, we have a, a ton of them, but for you, you would have one when you click the, the link and it imports into your Go High Level account. And you simply just want to create a sub account. Okay. And I'll go fast through this because, and I'm going to, I'm going to create it from a, uh, from a blank snapshot. All right. And I'm going to add the account manually. And then hopefully my personal information doesn't pop up as I type things out. <laughs> and, you, and you're going to fill out all of this information. And by the way, this is why if some of you did grab the trial today, you could kind of, you know, watch this and th this is all recorded anyway so i'm just going to put go high level uh agency site i'll just throw in business address i just want people to see it from like start to finish now that's going to create your i'm going to say it's going to be your agency sub account right because it, your agency sub uh, you would need to use a sub account for your agency if you're going to be running you know you're going to have your own website. Maybe people are going to book on your calendar with this website. So that would be your agency site. And now I'm going to just simply click load snapshot. I'm going to take a look for the day one final snapshot. Hit proceed. And then you just want everything to go in there. And hit OK. OK, so I'm going to give that one like a minute to load and then I'm simply just going to look for it the new the new uh right here so now I'm going to log into that sub account and again this is just for your agency site so I'm just going to just show you basically hopefully it's loaded in time okay it's right here okay and so again just a simple, fast website to get something to make this business real for you. Okay, now 
this is basically essentially a, it, I know it doesn't look blank, but it kind of is blank. And you'll see that this site, let me go to edit. Well, it, it, you, it eliminates your, uh, your need to know how to use the funnel um, editor in case you don't know how. You'll see how it has like a broken link over here, but you see over here it says images is your custom value. So all we're going to be doing is, you can see here, custom value agency phone number. Uh, what services do I provide? Custom values, descriptions of them, all that stuff. The reason why we did this is the image here is because we wanted this anybody even if you haven't learned how to use go high level to get their agency site up as fast as possible then when you start to learn how to use the funnel builder and stuff like that you could change the colors or whatever you might want to do and so the way it works is you simply just going to go to custom values and you see where it says site, all these, once you fill these out, they will automatically go onto the website, okay? And for example, let me go into my media. Hopefully I can find the logo. Once you upload your logo, let's see if I can find one. All right, actually, you know what? I'll just upload one. So to get your uh, logo in here, you're going to hit upload file. I'll just grab any logo. Uh, let's just do this one, whatever. Again, this is for demonstration purposes only. And so now what you do is you're just going to right click on the logo and say get link. Okay. And then you go back over to custom values. And in the logo key you're simply going to put the value which is essentially your media url okay hit upload so then anywhere there's a logo need it just fills in across the board Correct. in the entire company yep wherever i have the the logo uh custom value agency site we're going to call this visibility cloud that's the name of our agency. I'm gonna upload. Okay, and so what I'm gonna, again, and so now over here, right? And then I'm just gonna go to one that's finished. Owner email, just put your your uh, your business email, your name, your phone number. The calendar is auto automatically. You don't even need this anymore. The calendar is already connected. I'll show you that, show that to you. Privacy policy page would just be the URL. And then, again, rep, uh, your custom values for your service one, reputation management. What is it, right? Description. If you want to say it in a more professional way, you could just go to uh, chat GPT and type in, give me a brief description on what reputation management is, if you haven't learned exactly what it was today. Then service two, and then service three in the description, okay? And so that is it. And when you do that, you're going to have... I just don't want to waste too much time. Once you fill out that, it's going to look like this. Okay. Here's my custom values, uh, message marketing, SEO with a description. And I had lead generation there. Right. And then if I go over to sites, it inserts the, the logo. And it, now it has like my, the message marketing, SEO, lead generation. It all, it basically, it's just pulling all of the, um, all of the custom values in what you filled with. So then it's done. I mean, the site is done. The The calendar is here. It's connected. I'll just show you really quick how you do that. We just we just basically put up a website in two minutes. Yeah, basically. Because <laughs> even the, with the snapshot, they'll have the calendar already set up. They'll have everything. Over here, you see the calendar is located over here. Free 15-minute consult call, right? Because it's already done. It's already in there. And so with Go High Level, and this is one of the things I actually love about the builder, is the fact that like forms and calendars, instead of embedding them and having to, you know, get the embed code and stuff, everything built in it is just a drop down. So yeah, you can, can pull, click. You can pull you the elements, right? You, you can pull just pull all the elements, elements in. in. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then you have yourself a fully done agency. You know, obviously, if it's the first time you're using Go High Level, maybe it'll take you 20 minutes. But we wanted to give you guys that to make this business feel or force you to make this a real business. Because <laughs> people, you know, they just think they need to learn. They need to learn. Once you get this thing up, it's like, oh, my God, this feels real to me. Like, I'm actually... And then you would, you know, connect your domain. So that kind of brings me into actually one of the, you know, to kind of finalize this. So today you're going to get the agency site snapshot scripts that we talked about CQI, the trial close, the retainer close, the niche pricing traffic sheet. I could show that really quick what that is. Prospect tracker, tracker and onboarding form, forms. We can give this all to you guys today. Do you do right. you mind reviewing all those items maybe for one minute each? You know, not at all. Because yeah. I had this already here. Yeah, yeah. Just just to walk over what it's for, what's the purpose behind it. Guys and gals, like we're not gonna have time to go through every single thing they want to give away. I'm telling you. Like they're being extremely generous and they're wanting they're want to give away the entire farm. So we're not gonna have time to go through everything that was built over 10 years that led to, you know, almost a $35 million agency. That that's that's that doesn't just come overnight, right? So there's gonna be instructions for each one of these items, but I just want you to at least have context to what it's for. Yeah, and real quick side note. So um, and I and I think Paul so you said this was okay. Um, anybody that gets on a trial, right? And this goes with, you know, uh, outside people who've come in over the course of the last, you know, seven or eight months, we'll give you a goal high level training that will walk you through goal high level from start to finish. We save that for people who fall under our affiliate link for, um, just for a trial. And we'll give this to you because we know that the biggest hiccup that people have is kind of the overwhelm of go high level and our go high level training is geared only to agencies meaning you're not going to learn everything that go high level offers because you don't need everything that go high level offers especially in the beginning and so our training is systematically built by step one if you want to do x y and z you're only going to learn how to do x y and z if you want to run a lead generation campaign you're going to go to that module and it's going to literally only walk you through the lead generation campaign. So that will be delivered. And I think Paulson, the way I have that set up is I have automations in my own back end that when people do hit a trial, it goes into my go high level and they get they get all of the stuff already emailed to them. So if you're going to get on a trial, you may even get more than what I have here. I don't remember. <laughs> but here's yeah. like the bare minimum of what you get. All right, so let me pull this up. Uh, if you want to zoom in a little bit here, uh, this is a yeah. CQI trial close. What's CQI? Client Jason, questionnaire Jason, intake or? This is Jason's uh, baby. So I'm going to let okay. Jason, don't, we don't need to go too deep into yeah, yeah, it, yeah. but I'll give a nice, nice synopsis of this. So ba basically bottom line is, is, is for, for one, when we're brand new, we don't know what to say. We're, we're nervous. We don't have experience, all this. What this is going to do right away for you immediately. And again, whether you're brand new or experienced, this, this is something that you can be leveraging in your business. But what this does is immediately going to make you look like an expert. We're going to be asking them questions that potentially no other marketing people are actually asking them. We're actually asking them questions relevant to their business, letting them tell us about it. And not just looking like we're trying to come in and prescribe some, you know, oh, well, we've got this thing. We're going to sell you no matter what. Now, again, we've already identified these people as having a need. But what this does is, is provide a series of questions for you to ask. It also does another thing that I think is very important. A lot of times when we're brand new, we have this desire to work with anyone and everyone. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you from experience that you are not meant to work with every opportunity that crosses your path. You will make more money by saying no to opportunities that are not a good fit for you than you will by saying yes to every single opportunity. And so what this also does is it has kind of red flag answers built into these questions. And any one given red flag doesn't mean you, you can't work with this business, but it's that gut feeling. If I start getting red flags adding up, it might make sense for me to pass on this client. Okay. So this is going to Tell me about the business, tell me their needs so I can prescribe, again, on the doctor, the right things that make sense for this business, but also highlight this, this opportunity as 
potentially a red flag opportunity that I'll need to pass on and move on to find the person I meant to work with. So it's like, it's, it's a document that's going to help you do all of that. And then what it, it actually is also doing is going to flow into a script. So I don't have to guess what to say. Okay. Now, do you need to hold this up and read it word for word? No, if you already know you're gonna have a conversation with someone, right? It's no different than you in fourth grade gonna be you know, the star of the Lion King play. You probably had a script that you had to memorize and you study, so you didn't you know, go up there and just be reading it for the first time. So this kind of thing is something you're gonna look over, but it, we actually give you the words to say, look, if they said this, like, here's how you answer them, leveraging the questions that they gave, or sorry, the answers that they gave you to make it easier for you to sell. Hey, you said this, and so you can see that right there. We say, hey, answer to four, right? So you're basically just leveraging their information to, to make the close, and it kind of puts it in a nice handy dandy script um, and on, on, on a nice outline of questions to ask, and then a script on how to close the deal, okay? Yep. And then we go into the, hold on, post trial close. Yep. And then I combine them. And what do you say? You know, after after you do the trial, you know, how do you how do you get it to close the deal? All right. Well, we have that script um, broken out there for you as well. Yeah, and this is usually five to seven days. And again, real quick on on trials. You know, we always say trials is not length in time. Trials is result based. Meaning, if you're going to go into a trial on rep management on on getting them more reviews and you go out and within the first two days you get them five six seven star review uh five star reviews it's time to get them on the phone it's time to get them back in there and say hey you want me to continue to do this this is now my offer right this is what the cost is going to be so on and so forth and that's all it's it's all in here um and, and so it's that would okay be to, it's okay to set that stage before you begin no absolutely well. hey, yeah, like, hey, I'm going to do this, deliver results, and I'm going to call you back and tell you this is what, what it's like. It's totally fine to set that stage so your prospect is not blindsided with results, and they're like, oh, this guy is selling me on something even though he got me results. Like, oh, so feel free to set the stage on that. And because sometimes you may not hit it out of the ballpark because their list is just dead. Nobody's yep. touched it forever, you know? So give yourself some insurance and some breathing room as well. Go ahead, James. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, that's fine. This is the uh, simple trial close onboarding form. Again, you're just onboarding them. I could knock this out. We have a checklist down here to make sure that you you get all the information you need. Um, so that's the script that you would use there. Here's our retain. I mean, the onboarding form you do there. Here's a retainer. Now you move them from trial to retainer, collecting monthly payments from them. Again, this is just collecting all the information that you need with checklists. And then... Because, it's, you know, if you think about it, we show the process, but there's things that you need in order to make the process work. So, yeah, and the last thing you want to do is close the deal and, and have to go back out. You get, a, you get a client that says, yes, let's rock and roll. The last thing you ever want to do is leave that conversation without everything that you need to get started on the service. Because ghosting is a real thing, right? It happens in the dating life, but also happens in the business world um, where <laughs> you're going to get people that's going to tell you yes. Um, and in, in the time between they say yes and the time that the invoice is paid and you've collected information, you're going to have some people that disappear. So we want to help minimize that by getting all the information. When I have their attention before they go back to being a dentist, go back to being a plumber, I have everything that I need to get started. So I don't have to bother them. I can get my payment. Um, or if it's a trial, I'll just have the information where I don't need to be begging them back and forth, waiting on information. I can get rocking, get started, get results and move forward. Yep. Uh, and then we talked pretty heavily on the double tap method that we talked about identifying uh, businesses with problems using the go high level uh, prospecting tool. And yep. essentially, this is exactly the stuff that you will send them, you know, because people were probably wondering, like, oh, well, I don't even know what to say. Well, now you have the double tap prospecting script. And again, you could adjust this to fit you and your personality. You know, so what do you say if the business has no Google business profile reviews? Here's what you say. What do you say when they have no Google business profile reviews and no claimed Google business profile? Here's what you say. So everything, there's no stone left unturned. You, yeah, you'll know what to say. Right. I, I told you in the beginning, you're going to know who to say to, what to say, how to say, you're going to know everything. Okay. And then this is, this is amazing, by the way, guys. I, I mean, if y'all are not excited for this, I don't know what to say. Give us give give me a yes or a one in the chat 
if you are absolutely loving what these guys are putting together for you, I just want to make sure you're seeing the value of this 1,000%. What were you going to say? I, I, I hope they, they're seeing value. Make sure you tell me so I get excited that they're seeing value. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, um, yes. And now let's gonna now we're gonna say okay well this again this is based on us doing this so long we know what new people qu question along the process where they you know and we've always filled the gaps in and then eventually there's no more gaps to fill and this is kind of where we're at so here's our niche prospecting structure uh, I'm sorry pricing structure meaning. You know, we have done, we have over 30 done for you campaigns that Jason and I have run in our own agency, continue to run some of them, but you know, where we have the data on them, how much the AdWords are going to cost, every, everything from beginning to end of running a niche. And again, this, this is when we were at the bottom of that pyramid where we were doing as many niches that came our way. We never said no, we took them on. Right. And eventually as we worked up, we worked up more into like tier three campaigns, like divorce, mortgages. Pain management was a very big one for us. And so that's why we label them tiers. As you move up into the tiers, you can charge more money. What do I charge, James? Well, message marketing or rep management, if that's all you were doing, typically tier one campaigns could do be $297. If you're going to add lead gen or you're only doing lead gen, it's $997. Maybe you're only doing uh, SEO. But then if they're going to take it as a package, you could charge them $1,497 a month, right? And so... Individually, this is how you charge one, one, and one, or packaged, it would be like this. Because I we get this all the time. I don't know how much to charge. Well, you'll have this pricing structure. Now, the next quick, big question that we get. Quick, quick you know, note on this, quick note on pricing is some people say, well, can I charge X for a trip? This is what we call recommended minimum pricing. Okay. We always we always like to give that. Because in the end, pricing is always a product of what you, you could charge a million dollars if you wanted to. It doesn't mean Client's going to close, but in the end, some people just like James said, I don't know what to charge. This is recommended minimum pricing that you can safely charge these amounts and close a majority of the businesses you talk to because these prices are not outrageous and they're, they're great for profit margin and for you, great starter places that you can then build from. So you can have complete confidence when asking for these prices, not worrying about, well, is that way too expensive for them? These are recommended minimum pricings. By and, the way, one more one more thing I forgot to just mention. Uh, if you're brand new to the world of marketing or SaaS, we're talking about monthly recurring revenue. These are yes. not one-time charges. This no, is no. monthly, you know, like these are subscriptions or retainers that we're talking about. So you keep a client for six months, 12 months, two years. It's just that one-time sale as long as you maintain the services. So this is, this is bigger than just a one-time thing, just FYI. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I should put per month, right? Yeah. Um, and for anybody who is familiar with um, the configurator, okay, we'll talk more about that on day three, but we also have what we're offering in each one of these uh, plans as well. And then the next the next questions that we always get was, well, James, I, I don't know, should I run this niche on Facebook? Would it be good for Facebook? Would it be good for Google? Like, I, I don't know what to do. Well, here's your traffic plan. Electrician really should only be on Google ads, right? Yeah, SEO and stuff, but traffic source because it's an electrician. I mean, are, are people sitting in front of Facebook hoping that an electrician ad is going to go and fly by, you know, the, uh, their swipe? No, if they have a problem with their, you know, electric, they're going to go to Google and type it in. That's why you would run it on Google. Same thing with the garage door. Gym offers, right? free trial, $27 starter offer. That would be good for Facebook ads. So you see, that's where your traffic sources would be. That's what explained on, on this tab as well. So just don't forget that that and, tab and is when there. You say, and when you say traffic source, you're talking about lead generation services yes. for the end yes. client to correct. be able to use these platforms to generate the traffic. That is okay. Correct. Yeah. So certain industries, obviously, you know, like e-com right now, there's a lot of movement happening in TikTok, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. There, you know, so there's certain niches that are relevant to certain industries and platforms. Pay attention to that, especially when you're doing local marketing. So yeah, this is for the end customer traffic management. Yep. And then I guess the last thing I'll let Jason talk because this is his his uh, doing as well. Uh, 
prospecting. I mean, this is this is your accountability. This is oh, yeah. I love yeah. this. I love so, this. I love this, man. <laughs> yeah. So the, the biggest thing that people that we all think, and it doesn't matter really what business, but especially in the agency world, is we always think that we're doing more than we really are. <laughs> okay. And in the end, we talked about that guaranteed success formula at the very beginning of this, taking action plus consistency, persistence, plus patience equals success. What this tool is going to do is help hold you accountable to make sure that you are taking the most important part of that entire equation, consistency, that you are holding yourself to that. And what this does is, is a simple little tool, and you can customize it into whatever prospecting methods that you want. Uh, obviously, we highlight some of the ones here that we've already that we've already discussed today, but you can add cold calling on there if you really wanted to. But in the end, all this is, is it's a month by a month. You can see it's already tabbed out and it's a day, uh, day across. All you do is whenever you do that activity for that day, you simply put an X. And then over time, as you can see at the bottom, the daily total, your goal, the more X's you put, your goal is to turn your sheet green every day. It's what we tell people right? If you turn your sheet green every day and over the course of the month, which is the most important, your goal is to turn the sheet green every day. Some days it's not going to work out that way. But as you see at the bottom, just go to another day, James, and just put in some other X's. You can see at the bottom, the monthly total, it updates along with the daily update. Okay. And ultimately, if you are turning your sheet green every single month, you are on the path to success. And it helps you just have a nice visual that, hey, am I doing the work necessary to succeed? And what am I actually doing, right? So we can look back and say, all right, what am I really truly doing here? Am I doing enough? And we kind of based it out. Like if you turn your sheet green every single month, you are on the path to success. It's up to you uh, or it's all in your hands on the success that you're going to achieve. Like you're holding yourself accountable. You're taking the actions. The rest will fall into place. I yep, love it. Hey, accountability I, sheet. I, I told y'all we're going to bring some rock stars in here when it comes to these workshops. And now you know why. So hopefully you're enjoying this. James, uh, Jason, I don't know if we have enough time for Q&A. What I would love for everybody to do is put your questions down in the streaming and we'll go through and answer as many as we can. And we'll do a bigger Q&A towards uh, day two or day three as we kind of build yeah. those up. But just real quick, James, what are we going to cover tomorrow as we kind of close out? What are the What's the agenda for day two? Okay, so tomorrow, I, I think I closed my uh, my PowerPoint. I don't know what, I don't know where it is. <laughs> but I have literally no idea where I put it. But anyway, uh, I actually could just stop sharing. There was nothing else on there. Uh, there is one thing that I will be giving away, right? Like, we're going to end this in the next probably five minutes. And then I want Paulson to pick one more name. And then once you pick the name, I'll tell you what they get. So um, so tomorrow is going to be all about that rep management setup. And, you know, how do you get How do you set it up? How it works? How do you get the lists in there from if you have somebody that's going to give you a list? How do you set up ongoing reputation management? So it's going to be the whole setup. It's that's it's all about setting that entire service up from start that's to gonna, and and we're gonna be in the platform working yeah. a ton of that. So if you're a brand new and don't have a high level account, today is the day that you jump on an account. And only for all of this, y'all, we're just simply asking to just try us out for thirty days. <laughs> no obligation trial. You can just jump in and you get all these things. So awesome. So yeah, let's do I guess the last giveaway for today. Yeah, you can pick while you're going through there. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. 